All right, guys, so a little while back, I did a video talking about the five EDC folding knives that I would never sell, and I got a lot of requests to do a similar video or a video in the similar vein, but for fixed blades. And I will predicate this video with the same type of disclaimer that I predicated that video with, and that is, to be honest, I am a knife collector at the core. So for me, there's a lot of knives I probably would never sell, but if I had to say like my top five uh, fixed blades, it's a little bit easier than my folding because honestly, I love pretty much all of my folders and wouldn't really sell any of them. But these are definitely my top five fixed blades. And it's even a testament because back uh, last, it was around last fall when I started to shift from, you know, fixed blade, bushcrafting, outdoor content to do more, you know, EDC content. There were a lot of fixed blades that I did sell. And that wasn't to say that any of the fixed blades I sold were necessarily bad knives, but just ones that were not getting that much use. And that I had a lot of, um, I don't want to sort of say duplicates, but knives that could do a lot of the same tasks and purposes. So anyways, let's jump into the top five knives I would never sell. So first off, number five, in the number five spot, it would be my full custom JBK Layman. And this guy is pretty darn cool. The primary reason why I would probably never sell it is one, I really, it fits me like a glove. And of course it is custom. So it was made per my requests or specifications. So it was made to a three or sorry, five thirty seconds of an inch thick on the um, spine, which is the same thickness as the BRK Bushcrafter which we'll talk about in just a bit, but also too, uh, this thing has a beautiful tapered tang to it. It's well finished. It just feels good in the hand and it's made out of 8670 um, tool steel. So its performance is right there. It's really one of those knives that um, doesn't always get the most use in, of the rotation, but to be honest, like my top five fixed blades are all really, really good knives. Like these, any of these knives you see here are knives that like, if you weren't a collector specifically, could be like one done. Like you buy this knife and you really don't need another fixed blade like forever. So that is very challenging when we get to like these knives because they're all very, very good performers. All right, next one up is my Bark River Knives Bravo 1. Now you'll see a couple Bark Rivers on here because I am partial to Bark River. And it's really because I think one of the things Bark River does best is their ergonomics. The ergonomics on every Bark River that I've ever held, even if I don't particularly like the knife, um, every Bark River I've ever held, just the ergonomics, they feel so good in hand. And so if you've never held a Bark River, I would highly, highly recommend, you know, holding one, trying to even just use one. They are really good. So the BRK Bravo one is obviously no exception to that. This one is a classic and I like the Bar Bravo one, not only because of its performance, but also its heritage, its history, and uh, knowing how this knife came to be. It's also super rugged and uh, uh, yeah, I just have absolutely no complaints about this guy. It just works. So anyways, for me, the Bravo one is the next one up on the list. And this is kind of like my miniature um, survival knife. If I want something that's definitely like very thick, very full tanged and a tough knife, but also a little bit on the smaller side, the Bravo one is definitely that for me. All right. Next one up is going to be the LT Wright Legum or Legum. Now this is one that so many people want me to sell and so many people would love to have, but the Legum for me is one that I'll never sell because even though it doesn't see as much use as some of the other knives on this list, is where it's at because this is one of the few knives that um, Morris Kohansky helped or lended his hand in designing. He owned one and so for me, um, when it comes to bushcrafting and the outdoors, Morris Kohansky he was a huge inspiration, even though he has now passed. Um, he was a huge inspiration for what I do and for, I learned a lot of my techniques and skills from his book, Bushcraft, and from watching his videos on YouTube, which are all really worth watching if you guys are interested in bushcrafting. I think he is criminally underappreciated. Like a lot of people know of the book Bushcraft by Morse Kohansky and probably some of his other works, but he has a whole host of YouTube videos that are are all heavily recommended to watch. Anyways, the Legome is, you know, part of that. Um, he he lended his hand to the Legome, and Le, the Legome has a lot of its core designs, not only in the um, Puko design, but also it was heavily inspired by his 
um, knife design. I'm trying to remember, but I'm blanking on the name of it. But in his book, Bushcraft, he outlines how um, when he ran his survival school, he would just make cheap uh, kind of throwaway knives, if you will, to give to students that didn't have knives. And so he outlined the specifications, like how it should be just past the width of your hand. So as you guys can see here, the tip of the blade is just past the width of the hand. And, um, you know, like a few other specifications on like the thickness of the blade, um, the grind of it, how it should be a Scandi grind. So a lot of this uh, knife is based on those um, principles. So very cool knife. They are really hard to find at times because they are only available on Ben's Backwoods and they're made in batches by LT Wright. So if you get lucky and you get one, they are definitely keepers, but I've done a video speaking on that one explicitly. So anyways, next one up and probably like my go-to bushcrafting knife of all time. Like I love the Legome, love the Bravo one, love the JBK, but the one I've used for over a decade and just the knife that you know, just fits me very well is the BRK Bushcrafter. This guy just works for me. Once again, as a Bark River, it is super, super comfortable. It has that Coke bottle shaped handle as you guys can see there. And so it is just super comfortable in the hand. You can hold it for hours. And I love that this knife was one of the first blades really out there on the market to feature CPM 3V. So the CPM3V is super tough, super durable. You can absolutely beat the hell out of this thing, which I have, um, and I've actually had multiple Bushcrafters. None of them have broken, but um, these guys are just super durable, super tanky, and I couldn't imagine not having a BRK Bushcrafter. All right, last up is the Chris Reeve Knives uh, Pacific. Now the Pacific is my go-to survival knife. I won't talk about it here too much because people swear that I'm paid by Chris Reeve. And I do have a lot of Chris Reeves. Um, and I do love my Pacific a lot. But uh, once again, this is a knife that like, obviously I can't sell. You probably see it coming um, because once again, uh, I've actually modified this. So I don't think that the resale would be that high unless someone's buying it specifically because it's like my knife. Um, but even at that, like I don't think I have that much. Like I'm not a celebrity. I'm not that popular, right? So uh, I don't know. It wouldn't probably have a super high resale value anyways, but also too, I wouldn't sell it because this is just my go-to survival knife. I feel super comfortable with it. Um, I've done tons of survival training throughout the years with this blade. I know it's super capable and I, most of all, like, I think the thing that a lot of people miss when I talk about the Pacific is they think that like, I'm just talking about the Pacific because I love the Pacific, but honestly, like when it comes down to it, like this is my survival knife. And the base thing I've stressed throughout the years when it comes to survival knives and bushcraft knives for that matter, like even the uh, BRK Bushcrafter, like do I think that the Barky Bushcrafter and the Pacific are like the end all to beat all knives? Not necessarily, but I just have so much dirt time and so much practice experience doing things with both of these knives that um, I just feel super capable and competent with those tools. And so like I've tried to make the recommendation um, throughout the years that like ultimately it's not really about the knife that you choose, but it's about the knife that you practice the most with. And so for me, I think like the reason why I keep coming back to the CRK Pacific isn't so much that it's the best knife you can buy, but it's the knife that I feel the most confident, competent, and I have the greatest ability to use. And that really just comes through experience and practice. So if you want that same ability, you don't necessarily have to go out and get a Pacific or a Barky Bushcrafter. You just have to choose a knife and make that your designated knife. Like that be the knife that you're going to use for everything. And instead of just using a different knife for different tasks, say, how do I solve this problem with this specific knife? And so that's what I've done a lot with the Bushcrafter and with the Pacific. Um, and honestly, like I said, if it wasn't for the fact that I was a knife collector, my whole outdoor knife collection would probably just be the BRK Bushcrafter in the Pacific. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. As always, God bless, and I'm out.